What are things that you should know about your backup line when you highline? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to talk about your options for highline backups and how tight to make them. Before we get started, let's make sure we're real clear on something. You never highline on a single strand of webbing. Instead, you must have an additional line, whether rope or webbing, in order to have redundancy for your high line. We go over how to tape the two lines in our taping video, and we discuss how to install a second line in our web lock video. So you have two main options for backup line, rope or webbing. And if you have rope, you have a few options, dynamic rope or static rope. And we cover the details of amp seal as a high line backup in another video. So the number one benefit to ropes as a high line backup is dynamic and static ropes are more abrasion resistant than webbings because this has a curved mantle sheath protecting the fibers that actually hold you. Whereas webbing is the fibers that hold you are exposed. An ideal situation you would use a rope is when you already have one. Possibly in an alpine situation when you already need it and you're trying to reuse things you have with you. And some alpine lines expose you to additional abrasion risk even though you should pad thoroughly every time. It could be nice to have a rope which has additional abrasion resistance. So if you are going to use a climbing rope, should you use static or dynamic? Well, static rope stretches around 3%, whereas dynamic rope stretches around 30%. If you're on a short line like 20 or 30 meters and you fall on a static rope, it could kind of feel like this. And if you ever rigged a 200 meter high line with a dynamic rope backup, you could possibly fall a long, long way. You don't want to use a dynamic rope even on a short line if you're not very high off the ground. You also have to consider how high you are off the ground. If you're only 30 or 40 feet off the ground, you may not want to use a dynamic rope or even a static because it's too short. There's a lot of dynamics to consider, get it, when choosing a rope. So just consider how high you are and how bad you want it to hurt if you were to fall on the backup. So Slack Science from Balance Community just put out an interesting article about the safety concerns about using ropes as a backup line. If you have a loose rope backup and it twists around the main line like this, it could damage the main line when it oscillates. This issue was discovered at the French Riviera Highline meeting after some Feather Pro was damaged. It was discovered that the 6mm Dyneema rope backup caused friction when it got wrapped around the main line. Not only is it unsafe to have your rope backup wrapped around your main line, it's also not fun to walk on it like this. So if you do use a rope for a backup, make sure you pull it tight so it doesn't wrap around your main line. So now let's talk about webbing for the backup. So the main consideration of your webbing is going to be the stretch. Lion webbing from Slacklife BC is only 1-4% to stretch and their Sky Pilot webbing is 10-14% to stretch. Though you could, it's not recommended to put a low stretch line under a high stretch line. Because when this webbing wants to stretch when you're walking on it, you don't want it to bottom out on this webbing. It is very common to have the main line and the backup line be the same kind of webbing. And if you have a loose webbing backup that gets wrapped around the main, it's less likely to create damage as there's more surface area when it oscillates. And if your backup line is on your main, it's not as hard to walk on this as it would be if it was a rope. So now let's talk about how tight you should make your backup line. If you're walking a high line so low to the ground that you can create snow angels like Marco, you won't want your backup so loose that you become an angel. So there's two things to consider when choosing your backup line tension, ease of walking and safety. If you have a loose backup line, it creates these minor loops like you see here, which really help dampen the wobble when you're walking. And if your backup line is too loose, it'll create these giant loops like you see here, which create more of a problem than it's helping. For example, when I fall, you can see that the backup line is wrapping around my main line four or five times. Then it gets kind of funky to walk with the two webbings wrapped around each other. Also with loose backups, if you fall and land on it or in between it, you could possibly get hurt or rip all of your tapes. And if you want a line that looks tidy, or if you're close to the ground, make your backup line just slightly looser than your main line. Or you could do what they did at the Loveland Highlining Festival. They made their main line and their backup line the same tension. They did this because the high lines were not that high off the ground. And if the main line were to fail, they don't want the backup so loose that you hit the ground. But when the main line bottoms out on the backup line, you feel a lot of wobble. Speaking of hitting the ground, we decided to do a test. We have a 100 foot midline about 40 feet up set up with type 18 that's been permanently rigged for almost a year. So we decided to retire it in style by using it for a test. We were curious if there was a mainline failure and we had large backup loops if we would hit the ground. So we rigged the second high line 10 feet above the other one that I attached to and then we attached to the original line a bag with about 50 pounds of gear in it. So I slid out to the middle with the bag and once I was secure I helped balance the bag on top of the original line and then unattached it from mine. So then Kim ascended up to the line so she could cut the main. Yeah, like that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Woo.
so we were pretty excited with the results, or at least Kim was. With a one foot backup loop, every five or six feet, the bag did not hit the ground. Of course it got very close, so let's evaluate the results. We're not sure if our 50 pound bag would deck if it weighed the same as a person, and if the high line was only 20 feet longer and the same height off the ground, it most certainly would have decked. So this just shows how important it is not to have loose backups on low high lines. A low high line is all relative to how long your high line is. If you have a 300 meter or around a thousand foot high line and you're only 100 meters or around 300 feet up, you're probably gonna deck. Three to one is not an exact science, or if there's actually no science behind that at all, but it is a good reference point. Another interesting fact is that the bag slid to the exact middle after it fell. Regardless of how high your line is, we have to consider what would happen if your backup line caught you and you slid all the way down to the middle. If you traveled quite a ways, that ring could heat up and possibly melt the only line now holding you. So these are our logical conclusions from observing the results. But if you have some insightful thoughts after watching what happened, please put it in the comments below. And no, sorry, we did not have a dynamometer with us. So let's pretend you don't get whiplash from falling 30 feet, 100 feet, or even more. And let's pretend you don't slide 50 miles per hour towards the middle of a big high line and melt your line. Therefore, abrasion would be your number one risk. For an example of this, let's look at the Consumnes River Gorge 700 foot. With the 50 foot no fall zone and the main line already almost touching the edge, if there was a main line failure, the backup would most certainly be rubbing. And even if we padded the line super well with Velcro and padded the whole edge with carpet, we still have to consider what would happen if the main line snapped. There's a lot of force and motion that's going to be happening if there was a main line failure. So really consider the best way to pad your high lines even with a worst case scenario. And with the CRG 700 footer, even if we pad the shit out of it, we're exposing ourselves to some level of risk of abrasion because of that large no fall zone. So let's recap. You can use a rope or a webbing backup, and you can rig that backup loose to absorb some wobble. But if you're close to the ground, make sure your backup is snug. And don't only pad your highline for its current abrasion risk, but also for abrasion risk that might happen if you had a mainline failure. You can't always eliminate all the risks involved if there was a mainline failure. Therefore, you shouldn't highline. Hey, thanks for watching, but don't be a dummy and go rig your first highline without going with someone who knows what they're doing. But until then, check out these other videos and don't forget to subscribe.